a C++ there's the stack memory and the heap memory. The stack memory is part of the call stack and is really fast to read and write to, whereas heap memory is kind of off in its own place, little islands of heap memory, and you can have cache misses and whatnot as you access those. And so in general, the heap is a little bit slower than just writing to the stack. And so if we wanted to put a value on the stack, you can just create a value like this, and we have a value on the stack, and you can get an address to that value on the stack. And so why am I talking about the stack and the heap? Well, dynamic arrays, or the T-array by default, are heap allocated, which can be a performance issue. There's a special allocator called a T inline allocator, where you specify a number of elements that should be on the stack instead of the heap. Now, technically, if you use this in a context where you're on the heap, this will still be on the heap, but it'll at least be inlined. But in this case, we're just making them on the stack, and so this will put the memory on the stack. And what is interesting is if you open up an immediate motive, you can do size of the heap array, and it is 16 bytes. If we check the size of the stack array, you can see it's 32 bytes because it included those four elements in with the array itself. So let's see what that looks like. Once we set up the T array, it behaves just like an array that's on the heap. So if I inspect this, we can see though that the array max is already at four. And if I add to it, internally we can see that element zero is one. But what's different is if I get the address of the first element, I can copy that address and go to a memory view and paste the address. And we can see as I add to it, we saw a two be added to the memory. It's red to show that something changed to memory. If I step over and add three, you can see that three was added to the memory. The size also changed to three. Or actually, perhaps these are the elements. If we go to another memory view and I copy that stack address, we can see the addresses are relatively close in memory. So we know that we're actually operating on the stack between these two. Anyways, so what we will do is add a four. And you can see that we added the element four. The size of the array changed to four. Now, what happens when we add a fifth element? So we've only allocated up to four on the stack. Well, what it'll do is it'll default to pushing stuff to the heap. So if I add five, we can see that some stuff changed here. This is probably a pointer to some place on the heap. And left the contents of the values on the stack there. But if we keep adding, so we avoid some resizes, once we've added everything, we can get some addresses. So if I inspect these addresses, you can see that this is now the address of element four. The old address was this, and if I go over here, paste element four, we can see that the addresses are in radically different locations. So the old heap address, 23D, and now we're somewhere off in memory space, putting stuff on the heap. And the addresses for the fourth element, you might think, oh, for well, the first four, we will keep this on the stack, and then from five and up, we'll put this on the heap. But that would mean the memory isn't contiguous, which might break assumptions. And so if we compare the address of the fourth element with the address of the fifth element, we can see they are indeed both on the heap now. And so the inline one converted over from being a stack array to a heap array when this happened. And so that is just a way to optimize further. If you know that your array will have a small number of elements and you just want to operate it on the stack, but you want the dynamic nature of it, you can just use an inline allocator with enough space to ensure that you won't cause heap allocations. The problem with using this is that it breaks a lot of APIs. So if you have a function that takes a T array of n32 and you try to pass it a T array with an inline allocator, it's not going to work. It's going to give you a compiler because these are technically different types. There is a workaround for this, and that workaround is to use array views, which I'll cover later. But array views let you kind of abstract the type and pass. You can pass this or this into the same function as long as the function is accepting a, an array, a T array view rather than a T array. Anyways, that is the inline allocator versus the regular T array. Now, the inline allocator doesn't technically mean it's always on the stack. So if you put this in a class as a member variable, then it's going to be in line with the class memory rather than having a T array that points to some other place on the heap. 